So this is a little still life that I painted um, years ago. I don't remember, maybe seven, maybe more years ago. And um, I did it for my course, and it's done. This video is, as you can see, um, we're watching step by step by step. So the advantage to this is these are the stopping points. In other words, I'm putting in one value, then I'm putting in the next value, then I'm putting in the next color. And each of these colors is put in from darkest to light, um, starting typically with black, if there is black in an object, and then going all the way up to the shine, but going in order from dark to light. The other thing I'm doing here is I'm putting background around the object before I start to paint it. So you'll see that. But notice it's always dark to light, and you know maybe maybe not perfectly that way, but that's generally how I like to paint dark to light. And the reason I like to do that is because then you can see the object develop in a very natural way, like in these yellow flowers here. You start to see the shape of it, the three-dimensionality of it, so to speak. Um, and then as you come in and put the highlights in on the end, it you know all comes together. But you can still see the shape, and you can see it and judge it and, and have a, an idea of what you're doing. If you're jumping all over the place and putting in highlights and midtones and, and back and forth, you're not seeing the object object develop. Um, so here I am starting on this uh, silver um, object, <coughs> uh, but I'm really just putting background around these roses. So I always like to put a little background around anything that I paint. So in this case I'm about to start on the roses, so I painted a little background around it. And I'm starting with the very darkest color in the rose, and as you can see I'm just going through the steps. And in the case of these roses, some of these shadows stop looking like shadows um, and it gets, um, so I'm starting to put a little bit of the highlight in just so that I can get a handle on, you know, what's going on. So, but certainly in the beginning, you'll notice I always start with those darks and then build it up and finish with the highlights. And um, here again, same thing on the, on the next rows. Um, so, step by step, um, this is sort of how I think when I paint. You know, you're watching me, you know, at the stopping points but you can almost stop this video at any point and try to guess what am I going to do next and that's a good exercise so you take the video you hit pause and then you try to guess what is the next thing that I'm going to paint in what order and I'll always work dark to light and and that's a it's a great exercise to do that so you may want to try that then the other thing you'll notice as I start to put these colors in is that I'm not being super crazy precise or anything um, there are a few places where I just paint all of it and then lay in the, the highlights into the dark. So down in the bottom of the silver there, those little flicks. Um, but for the most part, it's putting it in like a patchwork of color with no blending. There's no blending between the two uh, colors other than the natural blending that just naturally happens because it's wet oil paint into wet oil paint. But everywhere you look, you'll, if you really stare at it, you'll notice I'm never getting blendy-blendy with it. I'm not taking out a smooth brush and, and getting rid of my texture or trying to make it look you know, smooth on the surface. So here in these glasses that I'm starting, again, look at, look at how I'm starting with uh, by putting background around the glasses first. And then as I start to paint the glasses, I'm, I'm starting with the very darks and working through to the highlights. And notice, right here in the middle of this, you can already see the glasses. And that's what I mean by working in order. You can still see the, the, the object. You can see, you know, the, um, understand what's going on with it. If you're jumping all over the place, you're not going to see glasses. So finishing with the highlights. And, um, and the highlights are going right on top of, of um, some other colors. There, there's not a little blank spot of canvas where I'm putting the highlight. So here in the foreground, just laying it in, I decided to leave that second little edge of the table off. That was intentional. I um, wanted it to look more like a fat piece of wood. Filling in the tabletop, and notice how I do the reflection, putting in the, the base color and then the light bits right on top. So here you can see the progress and then starting in on the uh, on the silver. Putting in the blacks wherever they go 
Again, stop this video at any point, hit pause, and try to guess what I'll be painting next. And that's exactly as I uh, teach my students to paint. Always working dark to lights, never blending, just lay it in, leave it alone. If you're going to blend, you're going to wait until the entire canvas is covered with paint, and then you can go in and, and, and play with it and, and uh, you know, fix your errors or, or whatever it is that you see. But in the first part of it, it's just doing a lot of color checking. And if you don't know uh, how to color check, you can watch some other of my videos and find out all about it. But doing your color checking and laying in your colors, not really thinking about you know, really not trying to decide if it looks right or wrong, because as you can see, this little silver cup doesn't look correct at this point. It's not until you get all your colors in that you can really judge it. So lay your colors in, do all your color checking, and then when the object's completely painted, um, then you can change your, um, you know, gears completely and, and judge it. You know, look at it, decide what you don't like about it, and go in and change it. But it's much better to do that what, once the canvas is covered with paint. So I'm just blindly doing my color checker, checking, laying in my colors, not blending. And then once the canvas is covered with paint, I go in and do my fixing or a little bit of blending or, what, or whatever it is. And so, uh, but if you stare at my brushwork, you'll notice it never gets blendy blendy. It might look like it in the finished product, but it's really still got a little bit of texture on the surface. So, moving in, finishing the background, and this painting is almost done. Um, this was a really a very detailed painting, not very brushy brushy, um, but that was uh, intentional. This is sort of the uh, the course. If you if you go to DrawMixPaint.com, you can. Um, see this uh, this still life and I use it as an example for the course and which is why I painted this but I thought you guys would like to see it here with some commentary and also um, just a good way to watch the progress because you can watch it step by step by step so there it is there's the, uh, the, the just filling in the background and last bit of feather some marks. See, I'm putting those on top because it just wasn't worth like painting around. So I painted the black stripes on top of the underlying feather. And watch how I put this reflection in. A little white bit is the very last part of, of it. And there is the finished painting. Um, if you haven't been to my um, art supply site, uh, GenevaFineArt.com, go check out. Um, uh, what we've been up to. We've got easels and oil paint and everything else. And thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.